regular meeting of the Rattown City Commission to order. We have roll call, Michael Ann, please. Mayor Sagata. Present. Mayor Pro Tem Schuster. Present. Commissioner Chavez. Present. Commissioner Giacomo. Present. Commissioner Chatterley. Present. Thank you. Can you all please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Note that we have no visitors here tonight. Other announcements, all city offices will be closed on Friday, December 25th in observance of Christmas, Christmas Day, and on Friday, January 1st in observance of New Year's Day. Our next regular scheduled commission meeting will be Tuesday, January 12th, 2021, 6 p.m. here in the Chambers. Since we have no one here, there is no items from citizens present, so we'll move into the Action items, 6A, approval of November 24th, 2020, regular commission meeting minutes. Do you all have them? Thanks go over them. I'll make a motion to approve the November 24th, 2020, regular commission meeting minutes. I'll second. We have a motion and a second to approve the minutes I'll as presented. Is there any further discussion? Anyone opposed, vote by the sign of aye. Hearing none, motion carries. Thank you. Item B, deliberate and act on resolution 2020-67. Thanks and appreciation to Glenn A. Beckett and Beverly Creamel Capish Living Trust for a real estate donation to the city of Raton. I'm just going to make a statement real quick. Uh, these two resolutions, we are going to go ahead and read them. And uh, at, the, at the end of that, we'll take a motion to approve. Okay? So resolution number 2020-67, City of Raton, New Mexico, resolution of thanks and appreciation. Whereas the City of Raton has accepted a donation of real estate from the Glen A. Duckett and Beverly Cruble Capitch Living Trust, and whereas the donated real estate consists of a portion of Block 2 of the Fairview addition to the City of Raton, Colfax County, New Mexico, and whereas the Cruble Capitch family is recognized for numerous contributions to Raton's rich history and community development in Raton, particularly in the field of education. And whereas Glenn Duckett and Beverly Creamel Cabbage have kindly supported numerous community benefit activities and programs through philanthropic assistance, and whereas the Duckett and Creamel Cabbage donation is timely and important to Raton's efforts at revitalization, and is anticipated to have a significant positive impact on community economic development. And whereas the real estate location is an undeveloped site that is important to Retro's redevelopment plans, has considerable potential for positive community improvement, and has key access from Tiger Drive. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Retro City Commission, on behalf of the citizens of Retro, New Mexico, has hereby expressed thanks and appreciation to Glenn Duckett and Beverly Creeble Cabbage for the generous contribution to the benefit of the community of Raton, passed, approved, and adopted this eighth day of December 2020. I'd like to thank everyone involved in getting that done. We entertain a motion to approve. Hello. Second. Second. All set. We got a motion in three seconds. I think you got three seconds. <laughs> yes, we did. All right, is there any further discussion or any comments? Anyone opposed? Vote by the sign of aye. Hearing none, motion carries. Thank you. Resolution number 2020-68, City of Raton, New Mexico, resolution of appreciation and recognition. Whereas New Mexico Main Street nominated Raton Main Street Executive Director Brenda Ferry for the Main Street America Mary Means Leadership Award earlier this year for her outstanding dedication to downtown, downtown revitalization. And whereas New Mexico Main Street has recognized Brenda's ability to build partnerships and collaborate with community and district stakeholders, as well as her energy and enthusiasm for this important work. 
And whereas, under Brenda's leadership, Bradtown Main Street has successfully collaborated on the Heritage Park multimodal project, facade improvements, upgrades to the historic Schumann Theater, the reopening of the historic El Raton Theater, and the securing of funding for New Mexico's first great box project to construct streetscape improvements along historic First Street. And whereas Brenda has led and directed efforts to establish a local metropolitan redevelopment area, update the downtown master plan, establish and build the annual Gate City Music Festival, and numerous other civic activities, programs, and initiatives. And whereas Brenda's hard work, innovation, and dedication has resulted in a strong and effective partnership between Raton Main Street, New Mexico, Main Street, and the city of Raton. And whereas Brenda has continued her strong contributions in 2020 by leading economic sustainability efforts with successful programs like the CARES Act Small Business Grant Program, dilapidated building cleanup program, the mural project, and the Raton cash mob that have served as a model for Main Street districts to follow. Now, th therefore, be it resolved that the Raton City Commission, on behalf of the citizens of Raton, New Mexico, is hereby express appreciation and recognition to Brenda Ferry for her hard work, effective leadership, and successful contributions to the revitalization of the downtown Raton district past three been adopted the same day of December 2020. I want to thank Brenda for all of her hard work and Main Street for what they do for this community. This time I'd entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve resolution 2020-68. No second. We have a motion and a second to adopt resolution 2020-68. Is there any further discussion or comments? All those opposed, vote by the sign of aye. Carry none, motion carries, thank you. Item D, public hearing, Del deliberate and act on ordinance number 1010 relating to collective bargaining for the city of Raton, New Mexico, providing rights, responsibilities, and conditions of continued existence and transfer of authority upon termination of local board. Mr. Mayor, Commissioner, you'll recall a couple of meetings ago we had introduced uh, this ordinance, number 1010, and at that time we talked about uh, its relationship to uh, legislation that was passed in the 2020 regular session of the New Mexico legislature. Uh, that was last February. Uh, there was a bill introduced that basically would uh, transfer uh, a lot of the rights and responsibilities of a uh, local board to the, the state board of Santa Fe. Uh, Raton is one of the, uh, the unique communities that has had a personnel board for decades, for many years, and we've had collective bargaining agreements in place uh, for decades as well. We actually have four collective bargaining agreements in place currently, uh, and we have uh, collectively bargained with employees. Uh, one of the few New Mexico municipalities that, that has done that uh, since back in the 60s or 70s. Uh, the Labor Management Board, uh, however, is something that uh, was adopted as a result of a settlement agreement between the City of Raton and uh, IAFF uh, some years ago, and the uh, City Commission here did uh, adopt a section of, uh, of uh, our ordinance, uh, personnel ordinance that had created that personnel uh, uh, labor board and now under this legislation we would repeal that section of our ordinance and replace it with the uh, model ordinance that you have in here. Now we don't have a lot of say so in the terms of the ordinance. Uh, this really was the result of negotiation between a representative of, of local governments and uh, the state personnel board and their staff. And so this language was uh, really strictly provided to us. Uh, and in order for us to maintain our, uh, person, our uh, uh, labor management board, we would need to adopt this prior to the end of the calendar year 2020. So we have it up for your consideration here tonight. Uh, if you uh, do vote in favor of adoption of the ordinance, then I will submit this to the uh, state board for their approval, and uh, we have a little bit of a process there. But we would meet that, 
that requirement of adoption before the end of the year. So I would answer any questions, Mayor. All right, thank you, Mr. Murray. Any questions for Mr. Murray? Okay. I'll make a motion that I'll make a motion to approve ordinance number 10 10 collective bargaining for the event towards the end. I'll second that. I'll okay. second. We have a motion and a second to adopt ordinance number 10 10 relating to collective bargaining with the city of Rockton, New Mexico, providing rights, responsibilities, and conditions of continued existence and transfer of authority upon termination of the local board. Is there any further discussion? Michael Ann, I believe we need to do a roll call on this one. Yes. Commissioner Giacomo? Yes. Commissioner Chavez? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Schuster? Yes. Commissioner Chatterley? Yes. Mayor Sagata? Yes. Ordinance is adopted. Thank you. <clears throat> Item E, deliberate and act on capital outlay funding priorities for 2021 legislative session. Mr. Berry. Uh, Mayor, just let me start out by uh, discussing what you have in your packet here. I have provided a, a uh, memorandum discussing, uh, well, it contains my recommendations uh, for capital outlay that the city of Raton would submit to the legislature during their regular session. Uh, that would start in January of 2021. This is a 60-day session. Uh, I would state right now that we have until February 11th uh, to submit our capital outlay requests. Um, and uh, giving you some guidance in the packet about uh, what we're really looking at, you have a, a, a guidance there called the criteria for legislature to evaluate local projects. And it uh, laid out a neat based criteria um, and uh, the planning criteria which uh, first sentence says projects been thoroughly planned and ready to begin and then uh, it talks about if, if, if funding is coming from different sources how that works uh, matching funds and they're interested in uh, the operational costs and so that's what the legislature is looking at I don't know that they always follow their own criteria for needs based <laughs> but that is a requirement for us to consider in putting this in. And uh, primarily, what the legislature, uh, and I have answered this question numerous times at the legislature, is this request uh, a priority on your ICIP? And you know, we, re we work on the ICIP throughout the summer. We adopt it in the uh, early fall. We submit it, um, and this request is uh, tied to that ICIP. Now, uh, we we're going through the 2020 changes as well, and so things are different this year. In past years, we would travel to Santa Fe, uh, find our legislator, have them sign the request. They would typically turn it into legislative services. Um, that's not going to work this year. It's an electronic submittal. Uh, I recently went through a training on how the electronic submittal works, uh, but basically it works this way. When we put in that number that corresponds with a priority on the ICIP, uh, a lot of that form will auto-populate with the information that we put in on the ICIP. I don't know how that's going to work yet. The site is not really functional yet. Um, but uh, upon your consideration of this, I will go to the site and start putting in uh, our requests. Now, I believe what's going to happen is uh, also, what will be auto-populated is that amount that we put in in the current year. So we may not have a lot of uh, discretion on the amount that we request. It may be what's uh, listed on the ICIP. And generally, we've tried to follow that guidance uh, in the uh, memo here as well. Um, now, I bring this to the Commission for your consideration tonight. It does contain my rec recommendations. Um, however, uh, it's a decision of the commission, and the commission can have a discussion on that with the criteria that we uh, had just discussed. Um, and I, while I would start putting this in as soon as I get that direction from the commission, we do have until February 11th to get in our capital outlay. Typically, we would have it in by the time the legislature convened, and I would try to communicate to our representatives in the Senate and the House um, why this is a priority for us 
why this is important. Um, and we try to put in a standalone project. Whatever funding we get here, we can begin and we can end that project or that need without looking for additional funds, without the delay of, of, of additional years, without other grant applications. We want this to be uh, standalone. So we've put this together uh, with that basis in mind. And Mayor, I will hold up and answer any questions that the Commission may have. Right, thank you, Mr. Berry. Uh, I did, too, sit in on that uh, train you're talking about because of the senior centers. And they said that there was some places where you could edit and stuff, but we'll see. I know the first day they tried it, they had some issues. Okay. Got some bugs. But let's see what happens. Are there any questions for Mr. Mary? Now, this is Commissioner Chavez. I have a question on the ICIP. Uh, it's for 2022 through 2026. Is that correct? Uh, uh, Commissioner Mayor, Commissioner Chavez, um, that is correct. Why? Why it's 22 through 26? I'm really not clear, but that is what is uh, mandated to us by the local government division. They set that up, but 2022 would reflect the current year. And I think to put something into perspective for you, we got funding on two of our requests through the 2020 legislature. You're, that's back uh, last uh, February that concluded. We do not have grant agreements on that yet. A lot of that is because of the, the 2020 effect um, and budget related issues, but um, we are almost a year, well, we're, we're uh, nine or 10 months from that and uh, we can't start on that project because we do not at this point have grant agreements. So, um, well, we put in there 2022, that may not be unrealistic as to when the funds would be available to us. Uh, and that's what I've been told in the past is that it's 2022 because that is the earliest funds for that project would be available. That would be the beginning of the next fiscal year. Right. So if we get funded right. in this, legislative session for 2021 well yeah then july one would be the beginning of the school year 2022. correct okay I, that covers it then that, that answers my question now mayor and commission i'll just kind of go down the list of my recommendations we try to uh, correspond to the icip and uh, back when we talked about this i had recommended to you and i recommend now that we look at uh, purchase of police equipment as our top uh, priority here and I've put in the amount of three hundred thousand um, dollars and what that would fund is telecommunications and dispatch upgrade we would uh, propose buying new uh, computers for our dispatch facility uh, install the new hardware with up-to-date operating systems uh, we would replace our computer aided dispatch software CAD software uh, that would include records management uh, uh, system. Uh, our, all of that that I mentioned is outdated in our current system, so we would upgrade that. Um, we would look at, and we've talked about uh, this before with a little asterisk by it, we would look at uh, body-worn cameras. The reason that we've talked about that is we also have an option through a uh, self-insurer's fund to uh, have them provide body-worn cameras. We have that now. We comply currently. However, it's pretty obsolete systems that were originally uh, provided by self-insurers fund. They had offered to do that again. That also has some benefit for uh, from them for a uh, liability standpoint. Um, and then also we would look at replacement or the addition of non-lethal or less lethal lethal police technology. This would include, include updated taser systems and possibly some other systems as well. Um, then we've listed drainage system improvements and reconstruction. We basically talk about two things there, the uh, subsurface storm drainage system in the original town site and then the, uh, the uh, 1930s uh, big uh, mortar sandstone channels throughout town. Uh, we have a lot of needs there over the uh, years. We're requesting uh, 250000 from the legislature 
uh, Sugar Leaf Avenue Pedestrian and Bicycle Trail. We had talked about that uh, related to our outdoor recreation partnership with the state. Uh, frontage Road on East 10th, we talked about construction and conversion of uh, that frontage road to a commercial uh, route that, that we could attract commercial business uh, related to the development of uh, that area with the uh, reconstruction of the interchange and potentially the designation of, of uh, Interstate 27 uh, regarding the Clayton Road. And then we talked about a document storage facility uh, there. You know, those of you who have been around City Hall much know that we store documents just about in every nook and cranny here. Ultimately, we'd like to scan those and have electronic copy, but uh, right now it's really, uh, you know, mandated that we would we would preserve a lot of those documents. So that, that's my memo for you. Uh, and again, I'll hold up there and uh, let the commission discuss. All right, thank you, Mr. Murray. Any comments or questions? Uh, Mr. Mayor, I think I've stated before that I think the priorities look good and they match the ICIP and I'm very comfortable with uh, the suggestions. And, and uh, very good. I just wanted to um, just comment on the uh, project I've been working on with uh, Jeff Peterson from Center for Community Innovation and basically this project of the toy lending library and possibly uh, other types of lending libraries that would be beneficial to the community simply give purpose to um, some of our building improvements um, because then once once that uh, plan is formulated uh, then uh, we could uh, designate one of those city city buildings as uh, that could be used for that that project. Um, and you know, I've been talking, I have an ongoing discussion with Mr. Berry on how to do it. And we're hoping to get that, the, you know, the proposal or the, the, um, the ideas put together uh, for everybody to review for, uh, early in January. All righty, thank you, Lindy. Sure. Any other comments, questions? I think just to expand on that, uh, Commissioner Schuster, we're talking about uh, maybe working with the Center for Community Innovation about uh, getting some more information together for that proposal and bringing it to the Commission at uh, the first January meeting, um, I think is, is the discussion, correct? Yes, Commissioner Correct. Sorry, I was muted. <laughs> that is correct. All righty. I'll entertain a motion then to approve the priority. I will move to approve. I'll second. Yes, I get that. We have a motion and numerous seconds mm -hmm. to approve the capital outlay funding priorities for the 2021 legislative session. Is there any further discussion? Is anyone opposed? Vote by the sign of aye. Hearing none, motion carries. Thank you. Item F, deliberate and act on resolution 2020-69, fiscal year 21, budget adjustment number four. Michael Ann. Uh, Mayor Kitchen, and your packet this evening is a budget adjustment, and I bring this to you since this is the only meeting that will be held in December, and this will be the end of the second quarter. So I do have a few line item adjustments that I'm proposing. Um, in various city departments. Um, the uh, Raton Humane Society had initially applied for the CARES Act grant that the city administered recently, and in reviewing that, we did not feel that uh, their request met the criteria. Um, however, the city manager and I have uh, decided to bring an adjustment to the commission where we could, because they are housed in a city facility, the animal shelter does belong to the city of Raton, um, that we could help defer some of the expense that they contribute to actually running that facility. So
also you will see some adjustments that we've proposed there um, for veterinary services, dog food, um, and building maintenance. They do provide a lot of the cleaning supplies and just everything that it takes to operate that facility. Um, other than that, uh, at a previous meeting, you did approve uh, an adjustment for $12,000, and that was the professional services for our economic development partners uh, to assist with administration of the CARES grant funding and to provide those critical business services uh, to the um, applicants that did receive funding. So Grow Raton has completed the initial round one business intakes, and then we did award the final round of funding last week to all of our businesses, and so all of those funds have been distributed and everybody signed their agreements and received their checks on that. So we'll be working on the reimbursement and then Grow a Ratch Home will start reaching out to those round two uh, businesses to do an assessment on their needs. Um, other than that, uh, I'm just reclassifying some other expenses uh, because last year we only had half a year's worth of the new GRT for the economic development. I didn't uh, adequately budget enough for the GRT admin expense from tax and rev, so I need to increase that one. Um, other than that, I think everything else is pretty self-explanatory. Is there any questions? Any questions for Michael Ann? I'll make a motion to approve. Oh, Make the motion to approve resolution 2020-69 financial resolution four. I'll second. We have a motion and a second to approve resolution number 2020-69 fiscal year 21 budget adjustment number four. Is there any further discussion? Is there any opposed? Vote by the sign of aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Item G, City Manager's Report, Mr. Berry. Thank you, Mary Commission. Uh, I have an update for you on the city the annual city audit uh, submission of the financial report to the state auditor. We have scheduled uh, an exit conference on Friday with our independent auditor. Uh, the plan is to submit the audit to the state auditor on Tuesday. The state auditor has put out guidance that only uh, electronic submittal would be accepted. That again is a change from previous years when they required delivery of a certain number of printed copies, uh, but now they are requiring the electronic submittal only, and uh, so we would uh, comply with that and do that that way. Um, as you recall from previous years, the review by the State Auditor's Office uh, takes a while, so we would expect uh, that would be six or eight weeks until we uh, get something back from them, and then much later when we uh, report to the full commission and the public the, uh, the results of the audit and the financial report. Um, just a partial project update uh, for the commission and for the public. We would anticipate uh, outages of water service in the Park Avenue area over the next couple of days. One of the remaining things on the Third Street uh, water line project would be a switch over from the old water lines to the new water lines. We would uh, tie in the new sections and then abandon the old sections that we are replacing. Um, and so we'll have periodic uh, outages while that's going on. We'll have a fairly large area of uh, uh, around Park Avenue, probably from uh, 2nd Street to, uh, to 4th and 5th Street, uh, out of water periodically over the next couple of days. Um, we, myself and the Public Works Director have been uh, uh, discussing and planning additional phases of our uh, projects regarding the transfer station and the aquatic center. We're currently under construction uh, in phase one on both of those projects and that's progressing along and then we've got some additional work that we will follow up with so we're doing planning on that and we'll report back to you on that. Um, as Michael Ann had reported, our staff is completing the closeout of the CARES Act agreements. Uh, she had talked to you about the Small Business Relief Grant. All of those funds are dispersed, and we have some closeout activities with the Department of Finance Administration. Same thing on the uh, local government relief uh, 
agreement. Uh, we are submitting closeout documentation for them and asking for the reimbursement. And uh, we should complete both of those in advance of the uh, December 30th deadline. Uh, lastly, Mayor and Commission, uh, the Municipal League had conducted their winter conferences uh, um, last week. Uh, it's kind of nice because we attended virtually from here. We uh, saved on the travel. Uh, you can attend the uh, conference and you can uh, do some other work while you're at it. So that's been going on. Uh, also, we've been doing a fair amount of online training. That's a good time of year for that and that will continue as well. That's all I have, Mayor. All right, thank you, Mr. Berry. Any comments from commissioners? Commissioner Chatterley? Commissioner Giacomo? Negative, thank you. Commissioner Chavez? Negative. Mayor Pro Tem? No, thank you, good meeting. All righty, thank you all for your support and uh, getting through this virtually. We appreciate it. I have no other further business, so this meeting is adjourned. Thank you.